land of little rivers. I, uh, I went casting yesterday for the first time. <laughs> a lot of fun. This, not this. <laughs> not for those of you who've gone fly fishing. Um, but the land of little rivers is a fly fishing phrase, a very beautiful phrase to describe um, uh, this region. And uh, this is a water year. We have, uh, Irene, since Irene on, seen the flooding and the cost of that flooding to farmers and to our communities has been overwhelming. Uh, there, you know, many communities are still dealing with Irene and the mitigation that hasn't quite actually caught up. Uh, the pollution in our water is an issue this year, not just in Detroit, but in Hoosick Falls, too. Um, water is everywhere, and I think for the first time, not people in this room, because I know we've had extraordinary access, but for the first time, other people are really realizing that we're going to have to work to protect the land of Little Rivers, to work to protect water, and that it's a fight that we have to have because there are companies that have no interest in taking care of our water and are quite happy to run roughshod over it. So I'll tell you on the uh, various uh, different uh, pipelines, I can tell you some broad issues because there's a lot of pipeline different, a lot of different pipeline questions. One, FERC is a deeply problematic agency. That's an understatement. <laughs> so FERC, the, the federal agency that is reviewing pipelines, actually has a financial interest in approving pipelines. And they have approved 99% of the pipeline applications. So for those of you who, like me, remember the Soviet era, and remember that there's a problem when there's a 99% vote, you know something's wrong. You know that that's a truly thoughtful vote. You know something's wrong when you get 99% approval and there's a conflict of interest. So on the Constitution Pipeline, I recently wrote a letter to uh, Tom DiNapoli, our, uh, our wonderful, wonderful public servant, our comptroller, asking him to do an independent review of the pipeline, asking for an independent assessment of the economic benefits, including taking into account what the effect is going to be on property values, um, uh, an independent assessment of an economic uh, of the economic impacts, including health impacts, because I'm very very concerned about the health impacts of these uh, of the natural gas pipelines. Uh, our water is so precious here; we can't afford to. Lose it. The other thing that I've, I've spoken about and that I care a lot about is eminent domain. Uh, I teach property law. <laughs> eminent domain, the idea that basically the state can just come in and take your land, take your maple farm, take your apple orchard. We allowed it, uh, you know, starting a long time ago, but the, the rules allowing gas companies to have it assumed the eminent domain was for the local public good, right? Because it's a pretty radical thing to take someone's land. Mm -hmm. uh, we should, uh, I think I have, I have real questions, and, I, and this is something else I mentioned in the Napoli letter, and there's, uh, I think it's really important to focus on, is eminent domain should not exist for companies that are using it for export. Because mm -hmm. that's not the public good. 